This randomized controlled trial found that a series of three platelet-rich plasma injections reduced pain by up to 90% and improved function by almost 50% when used to treat symptomatic knee osteoarthritis. Furthermore, they found that one series of PRP injections were able to slow down the progression of knee arthritis when compared to placebo injections. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. I'm really excited to review this clinical trial with you because it was extremely well designed and showed some of the amazing potential PRP has when used to treat arthritis. So let's look at what the study did really well and how it impacted their results. The study was a randomized control trial of 610 patients that compared PRP injection to saline placebo injection for the treatment of symptomatic knee osteoarthritis. There were 308 patients in the PRP group and 302 patients in the placebo saline group. All participants had either mild to moderate osteoarthritis. Severe grade four osteoarthritis was an exclusion criteria from the study. The authors measured functional scores using the Womack Osteoarthritis Index, as well as pain scores with the visual analog scale. They analyzed synovial fluid inside the knee at six months and at 12 months to get a sense of the general health of the arthritic joint. Finally, the authors got MRI scans of the knees at baseline and then at final follow-up to evaluate for progression of arthritis. For the platelet-rich plasma group, the authors started with a 50 cc blood draw and ended up with about 5 cc's of PRP. They reported that their PRP had a mean platelet concentration of 4.3 times over whole blood. This comes out to about 8 to 9 billion platelets in each injection. Treatments consisted of three injections at one week intervals and all of the injections were done with ultrasound guidance. Participants in the placebo group also had their blood drawn but this was then discarded and sterile saline solution was injected into the knee instead. The study's primary outcome was the Womack osteoarthritis score which ranges from 0 to 96 where 0 represents no symptoms and 96 represents the worst possible symptoms. So the lower the score the better. The blue line here is the PRP group and the red line is the saline placebo group. Both groups initially improved from baseline to three months, but look at the PRP group. They continued to have improvements that were sustained all the way out to two years. Contrast that with the saline group that was essentially back to baseline by six months and then actually got worse as time went on. When looking at pain scores, the authors used the visual analog scale, which ranges from zero, meaning no pain, to 10, which means the worst possible pain. The blue line, again, is the PRP group and the red line is the saline saline placebo group. This pain graph tells a very similar story to the Womack graph. Patients treated with PRP continued to have improvements in pain that were sustained out to two years. The saline placebo group had some improvements at three months, was back to baseline by six months, and then got progressively worse with time. Now what about synovial fluid analysis? The purpose of analyzing synovial fluid is to determine the health inside the knee. We know arthritis causes a lot of inflammation within the knee, and this can be detected by measuring cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, as well as interleukin-1 beta. The authors report that inflammatory cytokine levels in the placebo group were unchanged from baseline to six months. This makes sense. We don't expect a saline placebo to alter the effects of inflammation inside the knee. But now let's contrast that with the PRP group. At six months, TNF-alpha and IL-1 beta levels were lower than before starting the injections. This suggests an overall healthier knee. However, by 12 months, the levels of inflammation were back to baseline. This is actually a really important point that we will discuss later, so keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, so what about progression of arthritis? This was done by measuring cartilage thickness on MRI at baseline, and then again at the five-year follow-up. The authors report that the tibiofemoral cartilage volume decreased by a mean value of 1,171 millimeters cubed in the PRP group, while the saline group decreased by a mean value of 2,311 millimeters cubed. This intergroup difference was statistically significant and suggests that PRP led to an almost 50% reduction in the progression of arthritis. So there is a lot to unpack with this study, but before we do that, if you're finding this information helpful so far, please click the like button so the video can spread to more people and help them too. Thanks, I'd really appreciate that. 
Okay, so this randomized control trial really highlights that if you start with high quality PRP and have a good experiment protocol, you can expect to see some pretty amazing results. This study also hits some of the most commonly asked questions that I get about PRP. So let's go through each one of these points in relation to the study. Okay, number one. How much relief can you expect with platelet-rich plasma treatment? The authors in the study reported pain scores go from a mean of around 5 out of 10 down to a level of 1 out of 10. That's an 80 to 90% improvement. We also saw functional scores improve by close to 50%. These are some dramatic improvements that can really make a positive impact on people's lives. Many people with osteoarthritis are stuck in a catch-22. Arthritis causes pain, pain causes people to not exercise. When people don't exercise, their arthritis gets worse, and that results in more pain. And so people are stuck in this never-ending pain cycle, and that's where we need to break this flywheel. And that's where PRP comes in. If we can decrease pain by 80 to 90% and improve function by close to 50%, well, then people are able to start moving again. And once they are moving again, they can work on cardio and they can work on resistance training, both of which we know are critically important to slowing down and decreasing symptoms related to arthritis. Okay, number two, how many platelets do you need? I've discussed this in a previous video, which I'll link here if you wanna learn more. But bottom line, it really seems like you wanna start with at least 50 cc's of blood. And that's what this study did. 50 cc's will net you around eight to nine billion platelets, which seems to be the ballpark therapeutic range when using PRP to treat most orthopedic conditions. What we really need are more studies looking at the dose response curve of PRP. Prior studies have shown that if you don't use enough platelets, then people will not notice any benefits to symptoms, but we don't know what the upper range is yet. Some healthcare providers are actually starting with 120 cc's of blood. All right, number three, how many injections do you need? Now this is still controversial, so let's start with what multiple studies have concluded. One PRP injection containing 8 to 10 billion platelets can provide relief for around one year. However, at one year, symptoms are typically back to baseline. Newer studies like the one we just reviewed suggest that three PRP injections spaced one week apart will provide more symptom relief for a longer duration of time. So how many injections you need depends on a lot of different factors. If you have mild arthritis, you may only need one injection. But if you have moderate or severe arthritis, or or if you have significant pain, you may need two or maybe even three injections. Now we also need to take into consideration the cost. The price of a PRP injection varies widely and because PRP is not currently covered by insurance, the burden is on patients to pay for treatments. For some people, cost is not an issue and they choose to get three injections. For other people who are more price sensitive, it may make sense to reassess every four weeks to see if another injection is needed. Okay, number four, do you need booster injections? Yes, I do currently recommend booster PRP injections. This is best answered through the cytokine analysis that the clinical trial performed. Levels of TNF-alpha and IL-1 beta decreased after a PRP injection at six months, but were essentially back to baseline by one year. We know higher levels of inflammatory markers lead to worse symptoms and worse arthritis. So we want to keep these inflammatory markers as low as possible. This is why the booster PRP injection at one year is so important. Even if you are relatively symptom free, the levels of inflammatory markers are slowly accumulating. The booster PRP shot will help eliminate the inflammation to keep the joint healthy. Number five, does PRP slow down the progression of arthritis? This study suggests yes, it absolutely does. A series of three PRP injections slow down the progression of arthritis by 50% at five years after the procedure. Now here's the thing. I would argue that the results would have been even better had they administered yearly booster injections. Again, this goes back to the inflammatory markers we just talked about. If we keep the knee joint as healthy and as neutral as possible, then we minimize the risk of the arthritis getting worse. All of this is with the goal of making sure that you don't end up with bone-on-bone -bone arthritis needing a joint replacement surgery. And that's what this previous study concluded, that PRP injections help delay the need for a joint replacement surgery. Okay, last one, number six. 
What are some other issues that were not addressed in this study? There were actually a few things that the authors from our study did not comment on, and that's how to optimize your PRP, including which medications to avoid before and after treatment. The other topic is PRP aftercare and recovery. You can learn more about these topics with these two videos here. Check them out next, and thanks for watching.